Okay? Now, 12 rules. I remember interviewing, I was on the selection committee for John Calipari when he was hired here as head coach at the age of 28 years old. And he came into that interview with six notebooks. His offense, his defense, his special situations, also his community relations plan, his marketing plan, and his recruiting plan. I've never seen anyone more prepared in terms of an interview. And partly as a result of that, he got the job here at UMass. Okay? In terms of what you have to do, because you're not going to do the same thing as John, but what I think is important for you to do is to have an academic plan, to strongly consider the internship track, to get involved with volunteer opportunities, okay, and to do an internship or two. Is that going? Okay. So. I won't go into great detail on this. This is all up on the website. I understand it's been broadcast to you, but I think the internship track is very, very important. There are the requirements that are up there. And you can see with the credits, you have to do some planning. Okay? You can't do it too early. You can't do it too late. Um, Tony, Dr. Tony Lackowitz is Director of Internships, and his graduate assistant, Kayla McCulley, is here. Kayla, could you just stand up, please? People can see you. She helps... The scheduling, she's involved with the database. Okay. I also think you should have an academic plan and that you should have mapped out in some general terms what you're doing the rest of the way. Because this will tell you what courses you should be in and you should also put in when you're going to do your internship. It could be the summer, it could be the fall. But if the organization okay, or your target is something which has the best internship possibilities in the spring, then you're going to have to change your academic schedule and your academic calendar so that you can finish up your coursework so that you can go on internship in the spring. Now let me just go back to that list again. I've talked about the academic plan, the internship track, volunteer opportunities. Um, we have an outstanding, okay, opportunity for you in terms of soccer fest. Uh, Dr. McDonald's done a terrific job with that course. Uh, he happens to be here this evening. Let me have him stand up. I, I think most of you know him, but if not, he runs this course. It is terrific. Um, one of the things to do, and I've mentioned it here, volunteer opportunities. There are volunteer opportunities. You should get involved with soccer fest. Soccerfest.org is the address. If you eventually want to be in that course, you have to have had some volunteer experience before getting into that course, and there is an application to get into that course, so you will be selected, and it's going to be based on what you've done. Okay? There is also a UMass <coughs> Softball Fan Fest, okay? and Professor McKelvey is the one who oversees that. So there are volunteer opportunities right here on campus, okay? and obviously a lot of other sporting events also. Okay, um, now I didn't have a chance to Skype LeBron in, but I, I had a chance to interview him. We've taped the interview. I asked him how many work experiences and internships that you should have after four years here at UMass. And this was LeBron's answer. How many of three kings came down here to win championships? Not one. Championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two. Not three. Not four. Not five. Not six. Not seven. Okay. Hey. And when I see that. Okay, that's good. Thanks, LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> Call filling the stat sheet. LeBron was unbelievable in the All Star game. Did you see that? Nine shots in a row, 36 points. I don't like him so, but he was terrific. Okay, but he's filled the stat sheet. Okay, and what I think you need to do is fill your resume. Okay, between education, volunteer work, work experience, internships, and that leads to you having some skills so that you can then be in a good position to be considered for that position that I showed you at BC. Okay, so what LeBron would say. 
is volunteer plus work plus internships equals eight. That's what your goal is. After four years, you need eight of those experiences. Okay? That's what you need on your resume. That's, that's a great goal to have. Okay? Now, let me talk to you about some people that, uh, that, I, that I know and I've worked with that kind of give you some examples and answer some of the questions that I frequently receive from students. Okay? And that is, for example, um, what if I want to work for a specific organization? A lot of you have said professional team sports. Well, Jeff Twist, who was one of my first advisees here when I was at UMass, I said, what do you want to do, Jeff? And he goes, I want to work for the Celtics. And I said, you know, I know most of the people in the front office. A lot of my roommates from college were in the front office. And the whole office is made up of people in their late 20s, early 30s. They're not going anywhere. They love the Celtics. They were very good at this time. I don't think any of them going there. So I'm not, I think we should consider that and consider something else. And he did. But he came back and he said, you know, I really want to work in the NBA. I really want to work for the Celtics. I understand that it's not likely that I'm going to get a job here. Okay, but I want to do it. So he did. Okay. And what happened is that he did such a great job that at the end of his internship, they said, well, there's not a job for you, but, you know, we really want to keep you on. And they extended him out, and then eventually someone left, and they hired him full-time. This past year, he invited me to his uh, 21st, 25th year uh, anniversary of working with the Celtics. Um, so he has had his whole career with the Celtics. Next example, John Wenzel, also one of my early... Uh, alum, same thing. What do you want to do, John? He said, I want to work for the Celtics. He said, well, I get, went through the whole thing. Celtics was a long shot. He went to work for the Celtics, and at the end, even though he did a great job, nothing there. Nothing there. So he then, after that, went into facility management, okay, with Comcast Spectacore, then Comcast Spectacore, and has been at various facilities. And he goes, <coughs> he's now president of TD Bank Garden. Okay, he works for Delaware North, so in fact he has been taken all over the world helping them with their other buildings that they have. And he said, you know what, I'm very satisfied with what I do. And I talked to him about it recently. He says, you know what, I'm not working for the Celtics, but the Celtics are one of my tenants. Okay, so he has found a way to, to get involved with what he wanted from a slightly different place, and he's been very, very successful with that. Okay, and let me give you another example, Carol Ann McCall. Okay, undergraduate, bachelor's degree, 1989. She has started off in college athletics, okay? And then she went to host communications, which is an agency, okay? And it now is with the NBA, okay? One of our most loyal alums, loves UMass, loves helping out our program, okay? But she has been able to make a move. She's been flexible. She went from college athletics to the NBA. Now, one reason she's been able to do that, and think about this, she's been able to do this because her area of interest and expertise is marketing, and marketing is transferable. I had one of the ADS members <coughs> put in a question, he goes, well, what about being a scout? Okay, or what about being a salary cap expert? Well, that's great, and go for it, but realize that there's less transferability with some jobs than others. NCAA compliance person, scout, that kind of job is not as transferable. John Martin's going to talk about digital media. Digital media, you can start off anywhere, okay, and then end up where you want to be. So one of the things to think about when you look at that broad section of the industry is to get in there, get that experience, and if it is in an area that's transferable, you can get to where you want to be. Make where you want to be, okay, the end, okay, and you are really going to have a hard time if you say, I'm not going to go out of the Boston area, and I'm going to stay in the NBA. Okay, you might want to make that as a goal, but there's a lot of different ways to get there, including going out of the area and building up your expertise somewhere else. Okay, remember Yogi Berra? His famous statement, when you get to a road, fork in the road, you take it. I came to a fork in the road. After my first year here, I was... Someone recommended that I apply to the NBA. They had an associate counsel's position available. And I loved it here, so I said, no, I'm not going to apply. The guy who ended up getting that job was Gary Beck. Okay? And as you know, he did a great job with the NBA, and he's been commissioner of the National Hockey League for 15 years. 
Okay? You have some tough decisions to make. Okay? And you'll have to make them all along the way. And what you need to do when you get into those situations is you have to understand yourself and what makes you tick and what you want to do. And the other thing that you want to do is you want to be able to have some people that you can rely upon to ask for advice. Whether it's your family, whether it's faculty members here, whether it's the person that you work for on the job, on your internship, you need someone to bounce some ideas off and say, what do I do? Because there are going to be decision points that you'll have to make some very, very difficult decisions. Okay? Show me the money. Okay? Jerry Maguire movie. The other, the other thing that I like, and I'll read it in case for those who might not be able to see in the back. Working in sports can be a very difficult possession. Profession. This is Gene DiFilippo, the AD of Boston College. The advice I give to people is if you can live without it, do not get into sports. Go work in business, something outside of sports. You have to be truly willing to put in the hours, the 60 to 70 hour work weeks. You have to be unable to live without it to make it in this industry. Okay? Now, when I advise people, students, I will say, look, I'll tell you what I think. But you have to factor the money part in. You have to factor the money part in, and you have to factor in the family, personal side of things. Okay? It, money is a factor. I understand that. I understand that. And, but there's two things I want you to understand about money. Okay? One is that the sports industry does not pay comparable salaries okay, to other industries. Okay, and certainly in the early part of your career, the money's going to be less. Okay? So you have to understand that. And if, you, and if you're working long hours and you're not getting much pay, okay, then your hourly wage, if you break it down, is not going to be much. Okay? And, you know, I've had students who've said, I don't care. And I've had students who've said, you know what? I'd really like a new car. Okay? I'm not sure I like living six in an apartment. I don't really want to do this. And that's fine. You need to get yourself to that point to understand that there are going to be some sacrifices in what this industry is like. Matt Cater, one of our alums, is in an agency. 